Why are there so many pros in this tournament? I think there's so many pros, first of all, because it's a game that, that uh, most people don't play. But if you've played poker for a long period of time, then you've played Deuce to Seven, most likely. And it's, it actually uh, was more popular um, a, a while ago. Mm -hmm. It's starting to see a little bit of a resurgence. And I think the reason is, is that we're trying to spread it sometimes when we go. Billy Baxter and myself and a few other players trying try to, to get people interested. Try to spread the game. It's a great game. And it's, the fun thing about it is, is it's, it's like pure poker. You don't see any cards of anybody and all you can go on is how much they bet and how many cards they draw. Mm -hmm. So you're really trying to, it's a very instinctual game as opposed to a mathematical, so to speak. So why do you think a lot of people don't play it? Is it really complicated? I mean, I've read the basic rules. It doesn't seem like it would be that difficult. It doesn't seem complicated, but it's a little scary, I think, for most people because because of the fact that you don't see, it's intimidating because the people that are usually playing it are fairly well-known pros. Okay, so that's why so people So most people don't go, away. gee, I want to get in that game and learn a new game at a very high stakes. The other issue with, with this game is it's usually played very high stakes. You don't see a small mm -hmm. uh, a game like this spread. So it's hard to gain experience at this game. Yeah, I, and you I don't want to learn in a big game, obviously. Right, exactly, exactly. So why do you have to, or why is there a raise for the bring in? Why can't you just call it? Does that also make it a bigger game? It makes it a bigger game. It also uh, it, it promotes action. All right. And uh, it's the the raise is a, you can make a minimum raise. So if the blinds are two and four hundred, you could make it eight hundred to go. Uh, but it's it promotes action. Otherwise, you'd see a lot of limping and and, and that kind of thing. So well, let's start about the basics of the game. What's the best starting hand? What hand do you want to start with? Uh, deuce three, four, five, seven. That's called the wheel. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason. You want deuce three, four, five, seven. That's why they call it deuce to seven. If you had deuce three, four, five, six, you'd have a straight. And that counts against you. Exactly. If you had an ace, uh, you'd have an ace high. Oh, okay. So the aces are only aces high. Aces are bad. Aces are bad in that game. If you have an ace, you don't want it. But uh, yeah, deuce three, four, five, seven is a great starting hand. Obviously, that's a wheel. That's the best hand you can get. I haven't had one of those the whole tournament. All right. So it's a very hard hand to get, especially in single draw. In triple draw, it's a little bit easier to get, but. Uh, you know, any, any four card drawing hand, uh, usually you don't want to draw two. I've, I drew two maybe six or seven times during the tournament. Really? Only because there were, you know, it was the proper situation. I didn't have to put much in. I didn't have to worry about anybody behind me uh, raising it. So I could draw two when I was in position. Okay. That kind of thing. So normally you're going to want to try to draw one card, and uh, you can draw one card to a nine one card to a ten depending upon you know where the raise came from and that kind of thing. And depending upon whether it's a smooth ten or a rough ten. All those kinds of things matter in this game. So what kind of errors do you see players making that maybe aren't as familiar with the game? Uh, I think the errors that uh, some people make is they move all in when they have a draw. And uh, if you have a draw against somebody who's a pat 10, you're, you're an underdog. And so you don't want to get in spots where you're moving all in unless, unless you feel like the other opponent is drawing or you have a better hand. That's, that's pretty much, and, and people were doing that a lot. All right. What about bluffing? How does that come into play? Is it a big part of Deuce to Seven? Bluffing can be a very big part of Deuce to Seven, and that's the reason a lot of people like it. But I think you should bluff sparingly. All right. Uh, but, but bluffing is a very big part of the game, and that's what's so wonderful about the game is that you, could, you can really bluff any pot you want to. Because nobody knows what you have. Nobody knows what you have, and so that's, that's the great thing. But, but if you do that too much, you end up on the sidelines. So what skills that you learn in other games translate to Deuce to Seven? Uh, I think no limit hold 'em. There's uh, there's some skills there as far as reading people and as far as uh, understanding pot sizes and and what what amounts to bet and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Also, deuce to seven triple draw is a is a great game even though it's a different. It's it, you're playing the same game, but then you learn you learn from playing that game what hands to draw to and and how hard it is to make certain hands in one draw as opposed mm -hmm. to three draws.